So we're going to talk about open data and the question of quality. Uh, the spoiler is that open data sucks. <laughs> uh, we focus on publication and not on quality, but we'll get to that. First of all, um, what's my interest? Uh, I'm the Chief Product Officer at Open, at open Knowledge International. We, build, we basically build technical products for open data. Uh, we do a bunch of other stuff, but that's a core uh, of what we do. Uh, our goal is to open up all essential public interest information and see it used to create insight and drive change. Now that's really critical. We don't want open data just for the sake of open data. We want to see insight derived from open data and we want to see change in the world. Uh, and that's key to the argument for quality open data. Um, okay, so this talk. What I'm going to cover is that the open data ecosystem is pretty much exclusively about publication and data access. Uh, the focus on data publication actually is, by now, uh, say 10 years into open data, is minimizing the impact of open data. And in order to meet the promise of open data, what we all want to see from open data, we need to focus on data quality. Oops. Um, towards the end, I'll introduce some ideas to think about a techno technology around what's next, how we move towards um, shifting the focus to the quality of open data, and some concrete actions that we can all take uh, as activists, as people working in the open data ecosystem to get governments to publish better data. Uh, first of all, we should define open data. Um, the Open Data Charter uh, has a definition. Open Data Charter, for anyone who doesn't know, is a set of principles for open data that uh, is gaining traction in the open data ecosystem and governments are starting to adopt the charter as kind of a defining principles for their open data publication and transparency efforts. So open data is digital data that is made available with technical and legal characteristics for it to be freely used and re reused and distributed. Um, there's earlier open definitions, one that Open Knowledge and others worked on called the open definition, but this is the working definition for our talk. First we want to ask, um, is open data really important? Um, Maybe obvious to people at this conference that it is, um, but let's still go over why. Uh, it's important because it's our data as citizens. Um, it's a type of accountability of our governments. It's a way that we can hold governments accountable for, what, for their actions. Uh, fiscal data and procurement data is a classic example of that. Um, maybe more importantly is that open data, uh, if there's good and quality open data published, it can lead to a new, types of account, uh, new types of participatory cultures. Uh, new things emerge on top of uh, open data. Um, this can be ad hoc groups who are starting to build insights around data and so forth. And most importantly, we do want to see that. We want to see insight that leads to changes in the world. So that's why open data is important. Um, where are we now with open data? The field of open data, um, some of you may have heard from earlier talks, uh, is based around a few um, sort of key aspects of the field. So freedom of information uh, is still quite an important tool for open data. That's how we get access to data that has not been voluntarily published. Um, obviously the open data portal, um, data.gov, what's left of it, and data.gov.uk uh, were some leaders in this space um, based on top of open source software CCAN that came from open knowledge. Um, open data uh, at present has become quite tied to transparency. Um, transparency efforts of, of governments are often, like data is often used as a signifier of transparency. Uh, it's not necessarily the same thing, but that's how, 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 you know, that's how it's developed. And then there are partnerships and alliances, say the Open, open Government Partnership, um, where governments are now starting to kind of establish an industry, as well as non-profit organisations like ours, but there's kind of an industry developing of um, what open data should look like. 
as I say, the main actors are NGOs, civic tech, government, and of course, mostly philanthropists who fund all of this stuff, all the work that we in the nonprofit sector do with open data. Um, the way that open data looks now is uh, strongly influenced by the metrics and incentives that we, uh, as civil society, society uh, identify for governments to publish data against. So uh, that's, we, we all want data. Um, we want access to data. At the beginning of the open data movement, it was important that we just have raw access to data and the, as much data as published as possible. But the way that the field currently looks is still highly influenced by that. And that's, you see that in uh, initiatives like here, the Open Data Index. It's a uh, crowdsourced project by Open Knowledge and the Open Data Community. Actually, it was just released today, the latest results. Uh, the Open Data Index um, ranks governments, ranks the level of openness of governments based on what they publish and how they publish data. Uh, Australia and Taiwan, according to the results published today, are the most open governments in the world. The US is currently at eight, and who knows where it'll be next year, but it's currently the eighth most open government in the world, according to the Open Data Index. Uh, importantly, what we find at Open Knowledge by running the index is governments are really, really, really interested in what we're measuring. And it directly influences policy. We have people contacting us all the time. Uh, like at the yearly cycle of building the index, people from governments are contacting us all the time, very closely looking at the methodology that we use, very closely looking at the data sets that we identify that should be open or that are most valuable if they're open. And they're actually designing their um, transparency efforts and their open data publication the policies around the type of things we measure. Um, we don't measure quality, um, but that's part of the reason um, why, why a platform like this is so influential because of the attention given by governments to it. Similar efforts like the Open Data Barometer, uh, it's another type of index. What's different about the barometer, whereas the uh, Open Data Index is crowdsourced, all the information is actually contributed by the open data community, um, the open data barometer has a significant uh, aspect of government self-assessment. Um, so they all think that they publish great data, obviously. Um, and then newer, newer incentives like uh, the open government partnership. Um, in terms of producing good data, the eligibility criteria to be part of the open uh, government partnership is very low. It doesn't require that much in terms of producing good data, but however, it's quite a, it's a badge of transparency. So um, efforts like this, efforts like the barometer and the index um, really shape the way that publication works, uh, the way the publication of open data looks. Okay, so most of the incentives in the field at the moment, field of open data are really around publication. Um, and that means that we miss out on things. There's things that we don't see. Uh, there's very little emphasis by NGOs or any actor within the open data space on uh, usability of open data. We don't really measure or attempt to measure reuse of data. Um, we don't really for people in civic tech or, or open data NGOs, we don't really expect data to be of high quality. Uh, a huge amount of the work that open knowledge does is actually just wrangling data to make it usable. Like, I haven't put a monetary value on it, but we spend a huge amount of uh, our funding just on making nice CSV files. And <laughs> we can talk about that a bit, a bit, a bit further. In, when I look at the studies that I've got here, we'll, we'll see like sort of the real cost of that. Um, but the emphasis that we have in the system means that we don't um, even expect governments to produce high quality data. And obviously we don't incentivize them to strive for impact. Um, we incentivize them to governments to publish data. We don't incentivize governments to publish quality data. Um, 
So I've got a few studies from work that I've done and other people in our team have done over the last years uh, working with um, government open data. Uh, just to sort of demonstrate how deep this goes, like how bad the quality of open data is. Um, how bad the quality of open data is by governments who are apparently leading transparency and open data in the world. So first of all, uh, UK spend data. Um, this is a project I worked on from the end of 2014 and into 2015. And we've recently updated it, it's all recent data. Um, to, we were working with the UK government, who at that time were the number one, considered the leading um, open data publisher, open gov the most open government in the world in terms of transparency and open data publication. We decided to, um, with cabinet office from the UK government, to build a project where we actually assess what they're actually publishing, like what the quality is. So we, we chose, um, a particular set of data, um, it's called 25K uh, spending data. It's an interesting set of data to have cho chosen because the, there's actually an edict from the Prime Minister you know, from 2010 saying exactly how this data needs to be published. Uh, there's a schema for the data, written in plain text, but it's really clearly, uh, clearly understandable how the data needs to pu be published the types, like what the, what the date field needs to be called, what the amount field needs to have, and so on. Uh, it's very, very clear. The regulations are very straightforward, and all um, publishing bodies need to adhere to that. Uh, so all the municipalities and so forth. Um, as you see there, none of the data is valid. Uh, that's th what, there's, there's room for error here. Um, something like 0.5% of the data or 0.3% of the data that we uh, checked was actually valid according to the government's own specifications and standards and the rest had some type of error or another. Um, we got this off data.gov.uk, uh, all the data. We, even discovering the data was difficult enough. Um, but yeah, the quality is very low. Um, that has a pretty serious impact on the ability to use the data. Um, even though we at Open Knowledge International have worked with the UK government quite a lot, uh, this was extremely surprising just to see how bad, really, really fundamentally bad the data they publish is. And this is one of the most, yeah, like I say, specified data sets that they publish. So here we have a global leader in open data publication. Uh, we have a set of data with very clear edict on the requirements for publishing it, uh, including a very explicit and very simple standard that they need to publish to. Um, hardly anything's valid. Um, there's dire problems in simple file structure as well as um, adherence to the standard or the schema. And there's also dire um, problems in the timeliness of the publication. There's some, some departments still haven't published any files since 2013 or something like that. So um, I'll, I'll post a link to this um, presentation on Twitter a bit later, but you can have a look at all the data scripts that we used, um, the dashboard to display that information and so forth. Uh, more recently, the fiscal team at Open Knowledge uh, worked on a project called Subsidy Stories EU. Uh, in, in many ways, a similar case. We took uh, structural, in, structural funds from the EU. We wanted to get, build a single database out of all the structural funds data. And we wanted to be able to build stories on top of that data. Sounds easy. Um, we had to acquire data from 120 different uh, websites just to build this single database. Uh, the data is published in various ways, um, CSV, PDF, Excel, and so forth. We, over several months, we, pr we literally spent several months ETLing data that, once again, has a published data standard. Uh, has regulations on how to um, release the data in a timely fashion. Um, we spent months uh, doing ETL to build a single database out of this uh, data and to make it usable. The end result is a very simple website, subsidystories.eu, which in reality 
is just the very beginning of being able to make insight out of data. There's no insight there. All we've done at, at significant effort is create a clean database so that other people can maybe now start to um, investigate the data, which would not have been possible before, and find insights, find stories within there. We won't because we ran out of money um, building it. <laughs> That's part of the problem. There's a huge time and effort, time and um, huge amount of time and money goes into just wrangling this data. Okay. Again, there's some links here to information there. Um, the data processing code and the app and the data quality report on that project. It's not just uh, open knowledge, obviously. Anyone here who's been wrangling US data, I'm sure, has similar experiences. Um, Transparency International recently released a report on the promise of open data, but the complete lack of progress and complete lack of usability. Um, there was a, an open letter to the open data community recently by Data Smart City Solutions which address many issues, but one of them, the poor quality of the data that's actually published as open data. Uh, DigiWist, a really interesting project in the EU at the moment, even go as far to say, because of the serious quality problems that they found, that they think there should be uh, penalties for non-compliance to most basic quality standards. That's how hard it is to work with the data that, unless we penalize governments for lack of quality, um, we're not going to get anywhere, according to them. Okay. So, they're two, two small studies. Um, well, what can we learn? Um, governments who are leading in open data can't publish consistent CSV files. That's one thing. Uh, maybe more surprising, uh, even for me, because I work on data standards as well, but standards and regulations don't actually lead to higher quality or reusable data. Um, standards, at least in the case studies that I've, or the projects I've been involved in, don't really lead to better data at all. And huge amounts of time and money are required to actually gain insight out of open data. So, quality. What do we actually want? Um, in 2007, Rufus, the founder of Open Knowledge, said we want raw data and we want it now. Uh, this is a pretty famous quote in the open data space. Ten years ago, this was a great thing to say. Um, we're still saying the same thing. We're not really asking any more from our governments. Um, and they're providing us not only raw data, but really shitty raw data. <laughs> Uh, so we need to sort of get a bit beyond that and we need to sort of push the ball back to government and ask, ask for them. We need them to address the quality problems that they have in the data they publish. Uh, the goals, what are the goals? So, again, as a programmer, plain text data in, in one level, as a programmer, plain text data seems boring. As a programmer who likes CSV, I understand why we need it. Um, we would think that... It's a non-goal almost, but it still doesn't happen. Uh, we've seen from other, from Kate did a presentation this morning showing how much of the data on data.gov.uk is actually PDF. Uh, data.gov is your PDF. We want structural integrity. Uh, really, 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 really simple goal. We want CSVs that don't have mess and notes and non-tabular information. We want uh, rows to not to be empty and so forth. We want schematic consistency. Uh, this does not mean we want data standards, actually. It just means that if something's a date column, it should be dates for the whole way. If something's a number column, it should, should have numbers the whole way. We don't need more than that. Like, we, we do, we'd love more than that. <laughs> It'd be really good, that, but that can come after we just basically have numbers that are numbers and dates that are dates and amounts that, you know. And of course, timely release. Uh, Non-goals, there's, uh, some of these non-goals are a bit kind of controversial even to myself. Uh, I work on data standards, like I said, and Open Knowledge does do some effort here. Um, but what, what I'm seeing right now, especially in Europe and I guess in the US, um, 
mostly around linked data, but it's not necessarily about linked data. But there's a lot of emphasis on like technologizing uh, like technical solutions to these type of problems. Um, build a data standard and then the data will get better. Um, have beautiful abstract common code lists and then we'll be able to just do amazing stuff across all of the data. But as I've just shown, the data is just not even there yet. So these are really great things to have. Data standards, code lists, comparison and linkage across data sets. But unless we address more fundamental quality issues, it's just no point, it's just, it's a waste. Um, the other thing about these is that they all, they all require highly technological solutions. So the, what we would gain by, what we gain by focusing on this, we lose in terms of like human computer interoperability and so forth. So I, I really think these are non-goals at, at present until we can get, make numbers numbers. <laughs> so, what can we actually do to change the situation? What can we do to make sure that governments start to publish uh, higher quality data? Um, in non-technical terms, we can engage in direct dialogue with governments on the usability of data. Uh, I, I take open knowledge as an example. We do a huge amounts of data wrangling, but we very rarely kind of feed back to the governments and say, hey, your data's crappy. I mean, it, it, we, we just need to let governments not understand the, the, the impact that the quality of what they're producing um, call, um, results in. We need to build quality metrics into the tools and processes that incentivize our governments. So, for example, the Open Data Barometer, the Open Data Ch Charter, the Index actually need to include quality as a metric that's measured. Otherwise, we'll just keep focusing on access and publication at the expense of quality. Uh, and possibly in some situations, uh, activists, or it depends on the context, should actually just reject data that doesn't meet basic quality assurances. Like just say, no, this is not, this is not data. Um, we need something else. Uh, technically, um, we, we should start to focus on data validation and build tools for data validation. Uh, Open Knowledge has got some, um, again, there's links to it in the slide. We can build uh, dashboards that engage with internal uh, stakeholders at governments so that they can actually, so people who are working at the policy level need to be able to see that the, the data that results from their policies is not usable. So in order to do that, we need to actually start to build ways that they can see that, ways that they can understand that. Um, data portals, CCAN and other commercial uh, solutions need to shift a bit more emphasis onto publication workflows. I uh, think there's a huge amount to be done here, a huge uh, opportunity actually to focus on the people who sit in an office and put data on a portal. So to make it easier for them to fix data, to make it easier for them to version and uh, validate data and so forth. That's it, if five minutes is left. <laughs> <laughs>